What's your ah no sleep story that actually happened? My wife was pregnant with our first kid and my father gave us one of those small crankshaft operated music boxes. A bit like the one the kid in Mad Max 2 plays with. It played Frere Jakes. Had belonged to his great grandmother and it was a family tradition that it was given to whoever was going to have the next baby. But my wife played with the new shiny for a while before putting it on a shelf in the nursery. A few hours later, I'm out in the kitchen. She is sitting in the spare bedroom reading and I hear the first bit of Frere Jakes. I call out still playing with that are you? No. I thought it was you. Thinking she was messing with me I went up the hall and checked the nursery. Empty. And she is still in bed. Nice trick I said and then from the room behind me. A few more bars of Frere Jakes. Turn around and there is the music box playing by itself. I later figured that it had been over wound and the cold night had caused the metal to contract enough to slip the tension a little and start playing. T creepy as heck at the time. Several years ago I was looking for cool avatars and found this crazy owl picture. I decided I wanted to figure out where it came from and eventually figured out it was a picture of Stolas, a demon of sorts. Like the old version of demons where they were beings of power, not the new form where they are grotesque, mindless monsters. Full stop. This got me interested in that sort of old knowledge sort of thing so I got a book on these demons and started reading through it. Shortly after this I woke up one morning to find my grandpa's painting was upside down. My so denied doing it. Then I started hearing this 7 note jingle in the middle of the night sometimes. Like it was right outside my bedroom window. I couldn't find anything that was causing it. Then backwards and upside down things kept happening around the house. Like the garbage can would be turned around or all the knives turned the wrong way in their holder. I got increasingly freaked out and eventually got concerned I was losing it or something. Of course this is real life. So the ending of the story is not one of doom and horrible death. Instead my so finally admitted he had been messing with things in the house. And on a drive one day I heard the jingles and looked over and realized the nearby archdiocese has a bell tower with multiple bells in it. I was driving home from work about 1am, windows down, no music just enjoying the silence after several hours in a packed restaurant, listening to squawking customers, no other traffic around. I was driving a manual car, and had just relearned to drive after a bad accident 18 months previously, so occasionally I was a bit funky with the clutch, but I was fast on the recovery, I'm going up a really steep, long suburban hill that had a crossroads at the crest. I had the right of way, there were stop signs for the other road, when I was roughly at the halfway point of this hill, I heard very clearly, the screech of brakes and the thud two cars make when they collide at speed, it completely freaked me out, and I managed to stall the car, he'll start the car, pretty quickly only a few seconds or so in total that the car wasn't moving, and continue on my way looking in the mirrors to see the accident, but finding nothing, Figured it was a few streets away, I continue up the hill, and just before I reach the top, I would have been at the top in the intersection if I hadn't heard the car crash noise, and stalled, a car blasted through the stop sign at high speed, this car would have collected me full in the driver's side at considerable velocity, without my noise related stall, complete lights out for me, I was in a little car in the other vehicle much bigger, now, I was spooked. So much so that the next morning I went into the local cop shop to see if there had been any car crashes in the streets around my route home. Nothing. Not a single thing that could explain the crash I heard. My theory is, I heard the sound of my own car accident before it happened, and my reaction to it, stall, restart, changed the timing of my path up the hill enough to save my life. Guardian angel or some such beastie. I think this is my favorite in here. I don't even care if some is embellished or even not true at all. Good read. When my brother was first in recovery from addiction and the heck it put him through, there was something really off about him. For the most part I got that he had been through some pretty traumatic and harrowing stuff. And sure, it was hurtful that he wasn't really the same anymore. But I understood it's a long process and he was dealing with it the best way he knew how. But I swear there were points where I was convinced that whatever he was, he wasn't my brother, he it was a pod person, or a monster, or an alien, or a shapper shifter that had taken my brother over. There were times when I was looking at him and it was like I didn't even know who or what he was anymore. There was an especially rough few months, but the more he opened up about what was going on with him and what he'd been through, 
The more I understood and the more he felt like my brother again. My house was brand new when my parents and I moved in. I am 6 months older than my house. When I was about 15 I was watching one of those Discovery Channel haunted house specials. This haunting was terrible because the house had been standing for 200 years, so it had generations of ghosts. For some reason I said, out loud, new house means no ghost for me suck it I had one of those lamps with an adjustable neck and at that moment the neck swung violently down. So sharply, the lamp rocked on its base. It was probably around 3am and I woke up to what sounded like doors slamming and a really loud bang coming from inside my bedroom. I couldn't move anything except my eyes. My bedroom door was wide open and there was a black figure slowly moving towards the bed. I always go to sleep with the bedroom door closed and locked so I was really freaking out. The figure stared at me for what felt like 10 minutes but was maybe only 30 seconds. I was finally able to move my head and when I moved the figure disappeared and my door was shut. Definitely the creepiest thing I have ever experienced. I am chalking it up to sleep paralysis but it felt so real and the noise was so loud. I work at a summer camp. We used to have two sides of our camp, each having separate mess halls. Before one side got closed down, I've been over there many times, and almost every time I felt like something was following watching me and I've had a few cases of odd occurrences that might have been ghosts. I should also note that this is an all girls camp, and while we do have male counselors, the one present at the time of the story didn't have a deep voice, and the rest of the guy counselors all had heavy accents. We are also extremely far from the road, and while we do occasionally have people accidentally trespass, we never get them on that side of camp. It was around 7pm, sunset, and we were in the old dining hall. The activity that night was a haunted hike, the theme day was Halloween, and we were a station where one of us was playing on the old piano, and the rest were pretending to be ghosts. Because of this, we had no lights on, between groups of hikers, we were just chilling on the front porch talking crap when a few of us get a sudden chill. Everyone feels really uneasy, I feel slightly sick, out of nowhere, we hear a deep male voice say hello? Hello? Anyone out here? None of us respond since we're all too scared. I hear a sigh, and suddenly the feeling just disappears. We look all around the place but can't find anyone. We decide that it must have been a combination of nerves and someone talking on the walkie. Although later counselors who weren't there say they never heard anything on the walkies on their end, and all of the guy counselors say it wasn't them. To this day, I'm not sure what actually happened. You and everyone at that camp are ghosts and the voice you heard was from an explorer walking around the haunted campgrounds that got burned down 50 years ago. I'm just going to paste my story from a similar thread from a while back. I moved into a new place in a new county. After a night at the pub, I got the feeling I was being followed. Turned around. Huge black dog with red eyes glaring at me. I ran home. Locked the doors. Then I started getting nightmares about the thing hunting me down. And every time I was out at night, it was getting closer and closer. I put it down to the stress of moving. Well, until a friend of mine stayed the night to ease my mind. I found her awake at 3am looking out the window. Dog outside. She was pale as a sheet. She just whispered that's a freaking hellhound. In the morning, she ran out of my house. Came back a few hours later with this awful smelling powder. And hung it up in pouches around the room. With an extra pouch for me to carry. Capital I. Never seen the dog again. Never had a nightmare about it since. Anyway. Since then. I've asked my friend about the powder. Local all natural sea salt. Sulfur. Graveyard dirt. Ground pandan leaves. Dog hair. Garlic powder. And the ashes of some other herbs and spices. Coincidentally. She said salt. Pepper. Pandan. And garlic makes a great all purpose seasoning. When we were kids, my brother and I had bunk beds. He had the top bunk and I had the bottom. One night, I woke up and found that I was lying on the bed upside down, so my feet were on the pillow, my head where my feet should go. Standing by the bed was a man dressed all in white, with longish hair and a beard. He just stood there silently, and would peer down at me, then back up at my brother in the top bunk. This went on for what felt like forever. I felt really exposed the way I was positioned in the bed. 
and so decided I had to turn myself around. This was a long process, as I tried to make it look like I was doing it in my sleep, but I was terrified that this man would realize I was awake. I eventually got turned around and under the covers, and fell asleep at some point without looking out to see if the man was still there and if he had noticed. I can only imagine if it was some sort of lucid dream, though I've never had anything like that happen to me since, and that was over 30 years ago. I have to. I'll go with the stupid one first. Not really not lap, but I think it's funny sorry. When I was about 4 I had a yellow bouncy ball and was playing with it with my grandparents in the park. I dropped it and it went under a bush and I couldn't see it. I bent down to get it. Literally followed its exact path under the bush. There was not another bouncy ball in sight and my ball had turned rainbow. I crap you not the freaking bouncy ball changed from yellow to rainbow. I still have the bouncy ball. Pretty sure it's enchanted. More scary this time. When I was about 11 or 12 I had absolutely freaking terrifying recurring nightmares. It was always pretty much the same. It'd be dreaming I was in my room in bed trying to sleep and then it'd just know it was coming. That deep. Primal terror when something is very wrong came over me every time. Then I'd look towards the door and there would be a shadow. Then two hands with long black fingers, one after the other, would slowly curl around the door, making clicking sounds like a combination of bones breaking and nails tapping on a chalkboard. Then it would turn its head around the door, sometimes with red eyes and sometimes yellow eyes and stare at me. It was the most grotesque, demonic face I can imagine. Craters and wrinkles across its black face, vacantly staring at me, yet somehow filled with rage at the same time. The most terrifying experience of my life was having that dream, then waking up and getting out of bed and trying to run towards the door, but being transfixed to where I got out of bed, just staying in the same place, running on the spot, then the thing came again, fingers curling round the door, then I woke up for real, with the same primal terror, I'm still waiting for it to come. Well, I'm done. In my freshman dorm room. I got up to go to the bathroom at roughly 2am and I saw these green glowing handprints on the wall. Turns out the guys who were in that room before me used glow in the dark paint and put their handprints on the wall. <laughs> Lying in bed, trying to fall asleep, started hearing heavy breathing. WTF. I hold my breath to make sure it's not my own echoing in my bedroom, but it continues. Get up, turn on the lamp, sound stops, okay, lie back down and try to sleep. Sound starts again. It's definitely human breathing, and I don't have pets. I get up to check the windows aren't cracked, press my ear to the wall, the floor cracks, check my closet, open my bedroom door to make sure the sound isn't coming from the rest of the apartment. Back to bed, still heavy breathing. Someone is close and breathing like they're trying to be quiet. Oh freak, someone is under my bed. I checked everywhere else but there because that's freaking crazy, right? Squat down and peek. Nothing. Lie down in bed and listen to the breathing. I pick up my phone and scroll down to my parents number. Because it's becoming evident I'm actually having a psychotic break and hallucinating a presence in my bedroom. And then I have the bright idea to check my pulse. And the breathing matches it perfectly. I'm hearing my own pulse coursing through me. Not the way you sometimes do after exercise. But something must have been fucky with my blood pressure because it sounded exactly like heavy breathing. I've never experienced it since. I don't believe in ghosts, so I never entertained that idea, but fearing first that there was someone in my apartment, and then being absolutely certain I was having a psychotic break. I have clinical depression so it wasn't that far-fetched, were one of the scariest moments in my entire life. Oh man I've had this, too, from time to time. I actually feel my body throb with my pulse as well, and when I freaked out over hearing that weird shush noise, I laid still enough to feel my heart beating in time. I had the advantage of living out in the country with aggressive dogs at the time, so I was pretty sure it wasn't an intruder. Your story sounds terrifying. Oh, I've got another one. This was actually a story told to me by my grandfather. He wandered around the states a lot before settling down and had tons of stories about his travels. In this particular story he recalled that he had recently become a farmhand and was working long days. He lived on the farm in a small cottage. After a few weeks, the owner of the farm had to leave town for some reason or another and said that my grandfather would be the only one there. No big deal. 
Well that night as my grandpa lay in bed he noticed that the covers began to slowly move down the bed. Like they were sliding down a smooth surface. He grabbed the covers and pulled them back up and didn't think much of it. A few minutes later they began to move down the bed again, slowly crawling away. He pulled them up again but this time something pulled back. The covers flew off of the bed and onto the floor. The way he told it, he was out the door the next instant, leaving town to look for other work. Didn't happen to me directly but my cousin went on vacation after seeing the ring in theaters. He got back in town exactly one week later. He had had a long flight and decided to just go to bed. He flicked his TV on and laid down. A few minutes went by and then his TV went to complete static. He immediately knew that he was going to die from some freaky little girl crawling out of his TV so he instinctively dove out of bed and unplugged that crap. But turns out his TV was just old and decided to crap out at the most inopportune. Hilarious. Time. I lived in this decently old dorm my freshman year of college. Prop built in 50s, late 40s, and I had a few weird experiences. One time I got out of the shower and I walked back to my room. When I opened my door and walked into the room I got this very strange sensation, and then I could have sworn I saw a ghostly figure running at me with his fist up like he was going to jam it in my face. It also looked like he was screaming, very freaking weird. Figure vanished as it passed through me. I don't believe in ghosts, but that was some fricked butt crap. I was probably super tired because of staying up until 4am on a regular basis studying and whatnot. I would have simply punched the ghost in the face and if you aren't a certified ghost puncher then don't tell me it's impossible. I believe in myself enough to punch ghosts. Cross counter that Casper back to heck. When I was 9 my family moved to a new home. My mom kept her job at as an engineer at a plant 45 minutes away. Every year in October, the plant would start conducting big projects and my mom wouldn't get home until almost midnight. Back then my mom wore this bright red quarter zip sweater almost every day, and up until a few years ago it was her favorite sweater to wear. One Friday night I decided to stay up late and read and wait for my mom to get home. Around 12 I heard footsteps in the hall outside my bedroom and looked up. All I saw was a figure in a red sweater walking past my door and towards my sister's room, and assumed it was my mom. I called to my mom and told her that I loved her, and turned back to my book. Ten minutes later I hear the garage door opening, and I went upstairs to investigate. My mom was just pulling into the garage, and my dad had been asleep for hours. Dude do you think it was a real person or a made up brain goof? There's a local legend in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which involves a mysterious and supposedly deadly sort of otherworldly creature. Some versions claim that it's a man-like shapeshifter, capable of blending in with the shadows as it stalks through the desert. Others describe the beast as being curiously canine in nature, albeit with two long limbs, black claws, and eyes that seem to burn like pinprick embers in the darkness. One thing that remains the same through every retelling, though, is the high and eerie keening noise it's said to make when it hunts down its prey. One evening when I was about 11 years old, I heard it. I had been lying in bed, reading beneath my covers with a flashlight, when a mournful howl pierced the air from somewhere across the moonlit sands. My first thought was that it had been a coyote, but as the sound echoed through the night for a second time, I felt a shiver of panic flash up my spine and a deep weight of dread coalesce in my chest. That evil wail was not the call of anything I had ever encountered, nor of something that should have even existed in the waking world. It was the cry of a nightmare incarnate, and no amount of reason or rationality could shake me of that notion. Now, at around the same time as this story, I'd been doing my best to foster a reputation for being an independent and unflappable badass. That goal went swiftly out the window as the screeches seemed to draw ever closer, and I quickly ran from my room to seek the protection of my parents. Upon reaching their door, though, I was presented with an even more terrifying discovery. The howls were coming from inside the house, along with a lot of heavy breathing and the occasional whisper. I couldn't look my mother in the eye for a week. TL. DR. The call of a creature from a nightmare forced me to face a truly mind-melting horror. I was about to make a joke about your parents doing the dirty, but I think that's a joke. We moved into our new home January of this year. Being a younger couple with a child has made it hard to bond with the other neighbors surrounding us. 
Anyways, my son and so both play outside a lot and finding weird remains of their adventures is no surprise. One day I finally asked them why they make X's around the house and neither of them knew what I was talking about. Since we've moved in I'll occasionally find sticks in the shape of an X in front of our windows, doors, fence and even our cars. Safe to say we'll be investing in cameras because I've seen enough scary movies to know what's up. Treasure. My mother's side of the family always believed that if a picture falls off of the wall it means someone will die soon. As a kid it was accurate twice that I can remember. Once it happened and my baby cousin passed away not long after. The second time I was much older. My mother was vacuuming in the living room and suddenly the middle of our beautiful three piece mirror art showing the NY skyline falls down from the mantle and shatters. It was the middle piece with the twin towers. My mother and I talked about it after because again it wasn't a long time between events. I can still remember how tense of a moment it was. Throw away, just in case. On and off for about 7 years my family, mom, myself, younger sister and eventually younger brother, had a stalker. The origin story is kind of long, but this guy had raped my mother at knife point and threatened to kill us. There was supposedly a restraining order but the cops never caught the guy they always took too long to show up we were poor and my mom had a history of domestic violence alcohol related charges so i don't think they ever took it seriously anyway he followed us across north america multiple times when we first moved somewhere it would be fine for a while but he'd always managed to find out where we'd gone he mostly seemed to get off on scaring us he spent a week sleeping in a dump truck across the street from our apartment. He came to the door when my mom was away and we had a babysitter, and just stood there staring, before asking if my mom was home. One night there was a sound in the basement like someone banging on the furnace. By the time my mom got down there with a knife, he was gone but there were wet footprints leading from into the window. One night that stuck with me the most was when we lived in a trailer way out on a dirt road in the woods. It was dark. I was sitting at the kitchen table, trying to do homework, facing the window. My mom had her back to me on the other side of the kitchen, doing dishes. It was a hot night, so we had the window open. The empty clothesline was right outside the open window. It stretched from the side of the trailer out into the trees. As I sat there at the table, I heard a squeak and looked up. The noise stopped. I paused, then went back to my work. Squeak. I looked up again. Nothing. As I turned to ask my mom if she heard the noise, the clothesline starting moving, creaking along towards the woods. I looked back and that creepy mother was standing in the trees with an eerie grin on his face, pulling the clothesline along and staring at us. He ran off, as usual, when my mom went for the phone. There were so many other events, but eventually my mom got a new husband and I moved in with my dad. I don't know what happened to stalker guy, but he disappeared. I didn't get much sleep as a kid. There was a rumor in my neighborhood that the old widow across the street killed her husband. Turns out she did and ended up admitting it in a suicide note 5 years later. When I was about 18, I was sitting in class one day when an old song that my grandma liked popped into my head out of nowhere, accompanied by a weird sense of dread. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew something bad was going to happen. Two days later, I woke up just after 4am on a Saturday morning, wide awake with a feeling that I needed to stay up because, again, something was going to happen. So I turned the bedside light on and grab a book to keep myself occupied. 5am rolls around and the phone in my parents bedroom rings. I hear my mom get up to answer it. A few minutes later she pokes her head in my door, surprised to find me awake and tells me that my grandma had died about an hour before. My grandma and I were never particularly close, and I have no idea why that happened, but it really freaked me out. When I was about 8 my great grandmother was moving into assisted living so my family went out to Dallas to help pack up her stuff and figure out which heirloom kind of stuff we wanted to keep. My great grandmother was already out of the house so she let my family of 5 stay there. The house kind of had an odd feel to it but there was a pool in the backyard so my siblings and I didn't really care. We did know though that at least two people had died in the house which kinda weirded us out but like I said, the house had a pool. The first night, 
My sister and I were sleeping on an air mattress in the office when all of a sudden the open door to the room slammed shut. We were a little shaken up but assumed it was our older brother. The two of us went to check but everyone in the house was sleeping. We just shook it off and went back to sleep but not long after the TV in the room turned on all by itself. At this point I'm crying and my older sister reassured me that it was just something with the electricity. Fast forward to the last night there. My mom was sifting through a closet and found my great grandfather's army uniform. The second she pulled it out of the closet the power went out. When she put it back in the closet, the power turned back on. We took a bunch of stuff from the house back home with us and all of a sudden weird stuff starts happening. Doors shutting. The dogs barking at random corners in the middle of the night and flickering lights. My siblings and I looked up ways to communicate with ghosts and asked it all these questions with rods and the answers we received made us think it was our great grandfather. As soon as my great grandmother passed away, all the paranormal stuff stopped. I've got two. One ongoing. But I think the older one is a better story. I'm up north with my boyfriend and his friend. To disclaim the obvious, liquor is obviously involved, and no, I'm not crazy. I don't know how to explain what happened, but the explanation I give is a dream or sleep paralysis. So the BF is passed out cold. I wake up to this gibbering sound, low and rumbly, like someone muttering, almost words, or maybe a language I don't understand. No matter, when I open my eyes to investigate, I see this thing crouching, more of squatting about an arm's length away from me. I freeze, I can move. But I'm crap scared and focusing all my willpower on not pee myself. It's dark as all frick in the boonies, but I could make out its shape, less so the specifics. It was like a lanky human with a rack of antlers, and I got an impression of teeth when its jaw moved in the shadows. I reached towards the bedside table where there's a lamp switch and my knife. The impulse to do more than crap myself finally overwhelming me, and it touches me, falls silent, puts a paw on top of mine. A paw like a wolf's with elongated digits, and it's all cold and clammy. I freeze again, and it just up and lopes away on all fours a moment later. Felt like an age to me, just sitting there in silence. So I shake the BF awake and get up and scour the place. He can sleep through a bomb going off sober, and I mix strong drinks. Front doors wide open. I shut it and lock it again, and fall asleep after the sun comes up. It was a crappy night. This is a bit that keeps me from just dismissing the lot of it, though. I found claw marks in the hardwood, fresh scratches in the metal of the screen door, and impressions left in and by dirt on the step outside. It left tracks. This didn't happen to me, but happened to my parents. They moved into a house together, and my mom immediately felt weird in the house. It was cold in spots and she claims it just didn't feel right. Their dog at the time was on edge and barked at nothing closed doors. My dad worked often while my mom did shift work so she would be left in the house alone a lot of the time. She swears that on many occasions doors would slam, the faucets would turn on, and she would feel like she was watched constantly. The dog was whining and stressed, and my mom felt terrorized living in this house. She begged my dad to leave, but he never witnessed anything so he told her she was overreacting. One night, while sleeping, about a month into living at the house, my mom woke up to something burning her side in the bed. She turned on a light and there was a pile of hot ashes burning into the middle of the bed. They had to throw out the bed sheets and mattress. Needless to say, they moved out immediately. Your dad should have listened. SMH. I had a dream that I touched a symbol that was engraved onto my ceiling. And somehow it attracted a spirit that latched itself onto me I roll. It didn't harm me. But it filled my bedroom with a very nervous presence for about two days, and followed me around wherever I went outside the house. I work in a smallish type place, 95% of the time I'm totally alone in there, and while I was working late in the office one night, something rushed past me in the dark hallway and the temperature dropped a few degrees. That annoying little sucker kept me awake for about two nights in a row. Oddly, all I had to do was yell at it and it took off. When summons and dark souls start getting in the way. This is my wife's story but I've heard it enough times that I know how she tells it. Her and kid sister were home alone in their two story house. 
Wife was in bedroom downstairs adjacent to the kitchen upstairs and kid sister was in bedroom on the second story last door on the left. My wife heard a big clang in kitchen so she went up to investigate. My wife and kid sister met where the stairs and a hallway meet and both asked each other. What are you doing? What are you doing? The peeked around the corner into the kitchen and saw that their large stack of pans that sits on the counter in the corner near the stove that had the handles arranged all willy nilly had suddenly lined themselves up. All the handles in a row. Wife and kid sister were too afraid to sleep alone and both slept in their parents rooms that night. When I was about 8 I was at a friend's house. She lived next door to her grandmother and we would play in her attic all the time. There's a room in her attic where there's four shelves filled with these weird ragdolls her mom and aunt made when they were kids. One day as we were leaving the attic, we heard a soft plop. Somehow, a doll from the middle of the shelf had fallen off. When we picked it up, we noticed her button eyes were missing. A few hours later she and I were playing outside, and I squatted down to pick something up. I felt something jabbing me in my pocket. Reached in and the button eyes from that godforsaken rag doll were in my pocket. No frick off. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.